Hey guys, I was cruising on Pinterest and I found this uh, cool image that popped up by um, Vera Velichko. And it's a magic flower, like a concept art. And I was just thinking that would be a really fun exercise to try to uh, maybe in part two, we can texture it. But in part one, just see if we can quickly make a variation of this in Maya, just as an exercise, like a modeling exercise. And maybe don't make it, uh, I'm not looking to make it exactly the same, but just maybe take some, use this as sort of a rough reference. So to approach something like this, I would definitely probably start with the petals first. And you know, this is not like a PNG flower where you had just have transparency. This is actually thick geometry, which uh, looks really cool. So if you break this down, there's many different uh, amazing shapes by this artist but if you just start from the beginning maybe the first one is like this petal uh, right here and to make something like that um, you know we can maybe even grab let's just grab a box and I'm just gonna draw a box and next I'm gonna go to mesh and do a smooth and maybe I'll keep it kind of low, just subdivision one. And next I'm going to squish it down. And let's jump into our top view, maybe sculpt this a little better. I'm gonna press F on my keyboard. And what I would like to do is maybe, I'm gonna grab these points here, press W. And I'm gonna turn off my uh, symmetry. I wanna make sure my gizmo is in the center. I'm just gonna pull this out, pull this out. So I'm gonna, I'm looking to make this uh, low poly like a game asset. Um, so I think this shape would be, I'm gonna press R to kind of widen this out. I think this could be like this part here, one of the uh, leaves, and you can adjust this as you as you like. But I think uh, maybe make it a little longer. Now, if we did want to create a little bit of a bend, uh, it does look like. Let's turn on our uh, wireframe so we could see. But it does look like we need a little more topology. Like this is super low poly. This guy right here is just 24 faces, right? So it's maybe it's a little too uh, too low. So I'm going to double click on this line here, and we can do a couple things. We can add a uh, bevel, right? That's one thing we could do. Maybe with another segment inside, so we can use this. I'm gonna to go to my verts, press W, and maybe move them up a little bit. Press R to shape it. I wanna maintain kind of this shape here. Press W, and you can jump between W and R to scale and move. But maybe this will give us a little more topology to actually um, bend this if we wanted to. If you start getting uh, things that uh, begin to look strange shading wise uh, for now while we're modeling just uh, you know unlock it unlock the normals or just uh, set it to hard edge just so you can see it better we can always smooth it once it's finished but uh, while you're modeling I always like to do hard edges so I can really see the topology and not deal with uh, shading or anything like that all right let's go back into our perspective view and now, uh, if we wanted to, we can use the bend modifier, or we can just simply grab this guy here. And it doesn't look like there's much curve going on, but if you look at the pink ones, it does look like it's kind of curving up and actually even in. So to get that uh, kind of look, maybe we can select this point here, press uh, B on our keyboard to activate uh, self-selection. And if I pump this up, you can see that the verts around 
this main one that's being selected are getting picked up a little bit. And now if I push this down, and maybe I, I'm gonna grab this one. I'm gonna hold on the shift and click on the one in the bottom as well. See if I can create like a little bend, just a little bit. Let's grab these two as well. Try that too, maybe grab this. So again, I'm looking at the pink now. Um, I'm assuming these are gonna be the same, but something like that. And then there is a little curve there. So I'm gonna grab these guys and let's pump this up even more. And if we wanted to, we can even increase this higher. I'm not sure what your units are, but in my case, I kind of want my soft uh, selection go about to the middle a little more. And I'm going to grab grab the rotate tool and just rotate this a little bit. Again, looking at the pink uh, flower there part. So something like that. We can uh, lower our uh, self select and now we can maybe rotate a little more. But it begins to kind of get kind of strange. But I do like this curve here. I think that's kind of cool. And maybe I can grab this point by itself. And I'm gonna turn, uh, press B to turn off self select and just move this forward. I wanna maintain that thickness. So again, super low poly kind of look. Uh, turn on my uh, wireframe so I could see better. And that is pretty much this piece here. I think that's cool. If, um, if you ever have a situation where you could kind of see the lines through, I'm not sure if you, if I start zooming in, you could see that the wireframe is very clean. But if I start zooming out, you can see how the lines of the wireframe begin to kind of uh, poke through. That's just a camera clip situation. So watch this little piece right there. If I switch this to one, it goes away. So my clipping, um, needed to be adjusted for my uh, units and let me just check what my units are uh, currently I am in centimeters so all right so next uh, let's go ahead and see if we can maybe put these around so in this uh, reference I have one two three four five so maybe let's do the same I'm gonna go my top view and I'm gonna hold on the uh, D key and then V, and I'm gonna drag this to the bottom of my flower. Then I'm gonna find the center of my grid, hold on the X key and just snap it to the center. All right, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press Control D, and then I'm gonna press E and hold down the J key to rotate this and kind of snap it. And what I would like to do is, if I wanted the five of them, it's a little bit tricky because you can't really use grid for that. You kind of have to eyeball it. So let's try to eyeball it. So I'm gonna, we can adjust them of course as we wish, but I'm gonna let it go, do control D Hold on the J key again and just rotate rotate a little more. Control D, J, and just keep going around. So that's almost like a star shape. I think that's uh, that worked out really nice. Let's go ahead and jump into the perspective view and take a look. And obviously these need to be different depth, right? So I'm gonna grab my rotate tool and maybe move this one guy this up maybe this a little bit down and just change their uh, rotation so it doesn't look like they're fighting for the same space and if we wanted to we can even custom tweak it by grabbing something specific like I'm gonna grab this piece here press B 
again to activate self selection press W and I can just in my case I can move this down so it's not penetrating through the leaf or the petal I should say um, so you can adjust it as you wish something that makes sense so it looks like there are bunched up together but maybe maybe not overlapping I think that's pretty cool I'm now going to let's go ahead and go into our object mode we're done it oh I see one more in my case I would like to get this guy down and press W move him down go to object mode let's take a look yeah, I think this will work. All right, so for now, uh, we can always readjust more. I'm gonna select all of these, and if I uh, open up my outline, I can see what they're called. So I'm actually gonna combine them into one, and then I'm going to clear my history. And now I just, I'm uh, left with just one shape called P cube six. The name doesn't really matter, but the bottom line is they are all combined together. And the reason I'm doing that is because now I have the pink one and then I have the red one, I like to be the outer one. So I'm gonna actually control D, move this down, and then I'm going to rotate it so it's a little more interesting. Something like that. And definitely make it much larger. So right now I'm kind of creating the second layer below the pink, right? So something. I don't know, something like that. Now again, we can deal with some of the uh, things that are overlapping and maybe this needs to be a little smaller. I'm gonna double click on this guy here. I'm gonna turn off self select, go back to my rotation and my pivot has shifted, uh, so I can't really simply pivot it like I did before, but that's okay. Maybe, uh, actually, I'm gonna see if I can just move this whole, I'm gonna select both of these corners here, press uh, B, and I'm just essentially wanna eliminate this part here, so I'm just gonna move this up. And I think uh, the cool thing about doing this this way is because you, uh, you break the symmetry, so you make the thing look feel look and feel a little more organic. So I'm actually perfectly fine with randomly moving some points as long as it makes sense and create kind of a custom uh, feel, right? So I think this seems to work pretty well. Let's. Let's see if we can kind of fold them in a little, a little bit. Now I, I do see some even more the green ones out, um, and and those are interesting because they are kind of starting to bend the other way. So let's uh, actually grab one of these guys. I'm going to grab press B to turn off my self select, and I'm going to uh, do a. Let's click on something new. Let's click on this button. Uh, let's see, where is it? This one. Duplicate the current uh, selection. So I'm going to click on it. And if you look in the outliner, you can see that now there's two, right? If I go back to my selection, I can see I have one and two. So the two, this one is all of them. And then this one is the one that we just cloned by uh, pressing this button here. So I'm gonna make sure I, I'm uh, on it. I'm gonna click move tool and just, let's see, move them up. Just make sure that that's the case. Yes, it is. I'm gonna actually move them down. And what I would like to do is because he's kind of pointing down, I wanna flip him. So I'm going to center my pivot so it's in the center and we can actually uh, isolate it as well so we could see a little better. Um, and now since this, the pivot is centered, I'm gonna grab the rotate, hold on the J key. Now, as soon as I press J, you can see the step snap is uh, activated. So I'm okay at leaving it at this number, that's fine. I'm gonna hold down the J key 
and rotate this and you can see how it's snapping on the bottom right you could see the the degree so I'm flipping it to 180 and I'm pretty happy with this I'm gonna jump out of the isolate mode and take a look grab my move tool and maybe put this a little lower I'm gonna hold down the uh, D key press V and snap it to the very edge grab my rotate which is E you can press E for a shortcut and just kind of rotate this down even more all right and then to make it uh, even more different than the rest it does seem to be like it's a little skinnier so I'm gonna grab my scale tool and just kind of scale them in and if I wanted to we can even scale this out just so it looks like it's not exactly the same as these right so that's the green one here and there's uh, looks like maybe there's five of those as well so I'm actually gonna jump back into my top view let's try to identify where that is I think it's here we can click on this button here to go into x-ray and maybe uh, using the war world uh, rotation we can rotate it to where it, you know it's poking through the space press ctrl D and let's go ahead and make copies of these all the way around all right I'm gonna turn off my x-ray jump into my perspective view and take a look if the grid um, is a problem you can always turn the grid off so you can see it a little better you can even turn on uh, uh, AO the ambient occlusion so you can see I'll turn it off and on it gives you like a little shadow underneath so you can maybe get a better feel now one thing that I would like to do is I want to take both of these and I actually want to uh, see if I can fold them up a little at the same time so we could probably use a soft select for that or um, let's see if we can maybe I'm gonna combine them into one shape and let's go ahead and go to deform and go to none uh, and let's see let's try to use lettuce let's like let, let's look at the uh, lettuce options here so it's four four by four let me see what that looks like I think that could work I'm gonna go with this I'm gonna leave my lettuce on go, go to lettuce points right click on it and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab all of these points up here and let's see what happens if we uh, pull them up a little bit and it's not really uh, grabbing that guy so you can see if as you're pointing it it's not really um, so maybe let me grab actually both of these like that I want to grab the first two stories of this interesting lettuce building and let's see yeah so I'm gonna pull this up a little bit and then I'm gonna grab my scale tool and see if I can kind of fold them in maybe grab just the top ones now and fold that in No, that's maybe that's a little too much okay so um, let's say I'm happy with this I'm gonna go to object mode and I'm gonna select select the whole thing and just go ahead and clear my history and that will get rid of that uh, lattice deformer and now what I'd like to do is I'm actually gonna grab my faces right there just like kind of the middle press B on my keyboard uh, let's open up our soft select and let's do a global and what I would like to do is take my uh, move tool and just kind of push this down just like that 
Now I'm folding it a little more than uh, maybe the reference, but I kind of like it. I think I'm going for a more closed feel of this flower. And here's the thing, uh, the cool thing that I was telling you, you can just adjust these as you wish, as you see fit. So maybe some of mine are, just feel like they're a little too low. I kind of like this, I think this is cool. You can also grab the center if you wanted to and almost let's grab all of these here and grab the center and let's just kind of scale them in so we can even make this whole thing a little smaller inside. So it adds even more uh, variation. All right. I think that's uh, looking pretty good. Next, let's go ahead and add a uh, maybe a stem to this flower. I'm gonna go back to my perspective view. I'm gonna turn on our uh, ground there, our floor. And actually, let's go ahead and do this from the front view. Go ahead and see if we can create a stem there by simply drawing it in. I'm just going to grab my um, curves and I'm going to do something really simple. Let's grab the pencil tool and the stem is really interesting. It looks like it's, it's got a lot of motion there. So maybe something like that could work for us. I'm going to select this. I really don't want to. Um, the reason that's happening is because my global uh, on the soft select is still on. So if so if you switch it to surface, you could see now I'm only affecting the surface that I'm selecting. Um, if you wanted to readjust your curve, you can always go to points and press B um, if you needed to to select the uh, more you know so it's softer, right? And I'm not sure if that's necessary, but I'm just showing you that you could still adjust it even though there's a lot of points because we drew it with the pencil. But we can adjust the curve. Let's say I'm happy with this, which I am. I'm going to go to my perspective view, take a look. And now I want to make this into 3D geometry by going to uh, create and do a sweep mesh. And let's go ahead and scale the profile up. So I'm not sure um, what yours looks like, but mine is definitely way too thin. I'm gonna switch this to 15. And I kind of like it kind of uh, thick. I'm gonna change the precision down so it's lower res. I actually would like it to be somewhat in this arena so it looks like it's kind of low poly. And I actually, uh, I'm very happy with this. I'm gonna select my stem, go back to poly modeling tab and clear the uh, history. And all I wanna do is now just pull this up. So I'm gonna um, press, uh, I'm just gonna double click on this edge to select the whole rim. And if I turn my uh, soft select on, you can see that the entire edge all the way around was selected. I'm gonna put soft select back on press W and I just want to move this up so it goes right into the flower just like that go to object mode and at this point if we needed to we could select all of this and turn the soft edges on so we could see what that looks like a little more organic, even though this is super low poly. Um, we're only at 728 faces. So this is a perfect, beautiful uh, game topology, right? Looking really good. Uh, next, let's go ahead and do these uh, maybe fun leaves that uh, are coming out of the stem. So to create uh, something like that, let's maybe try a different uh, approach. I'm just gonna, uh, let's try to think what would be a best way to do this. 
I'm gonna turn the um, grid back on and I would like to move my flower up actually. Now, I can't move it because it's, um, it's actually, I'm gonna clear, clear my history and actually delete my curve and my outliner, but um, it, it's not moving well because uh, there's so many pieces. So I can, um, one trick you could do is to uh, select everything in the outliner and just do a control G to group it. And now if you try to move it, you can see you're moving it as a group. So it's just a fast way to move stuff around if you run into uh, a problem. And we can clean this all this up later. But uh, now let's just quickly create these leaves. And uh, you just let's uh, let's just use a box. I'm going to drag another box out, make it kind of the thickness that I want. And what I would like to do is I'm gonna grab this guy here and just kind of pull them, pull him out. I'm gonna press R to kind of scale this in. And this part right here is gonna be kind of the edge, right? And then what I need to do is the back part is, is somewhat round, but wide. So I'm gonna click on this, do Control E, and grab my uh, blue arrow and just move this out. So somewhere in this area. And then I'm gonna scale this in. Very cool. Uh, let's go ahead and add a lot more edges to this so we can actually bend this. And there is, there is also kind of a curve in, so we need a lot more geometry here. So I'm gonna select this, go to, uh, let's go to Mesh Tools and do Insert Edge Loops. Let's click on Options and take a look. I'm gonna go to Multiple Edge Loops and I'm gonna crank this up to like five. And let's just see what that looks like. I think that's, uh, good but maybe I'm gonna control Z let's give me a little more give me give me a seven let's see what that looks like yeah I think I'm gonna go with seven because I really want to get this curve down and if we wanted to we can also uh, go to a relative distance and maybe give ourselves one here as well now my edge flow uh, is on so you could see when the edge flow is on it will take an average right of these edges and make this smooth if I turn this off and try to put something in you can see that it's it's maintaining the shape so in this case I actually because this is organic I actually do like that it's readjusting it that's great and maybe we can even put some more here now in this case you could see I actually don't want uh, that change which is interesting so I'm gonna add a couple for myself without changing the flow. All right, so I think I'm ready to bend this. And um, to bend this, let's go ahead and grab our uh, deform nonlinear bend. I'm just gonna click on it. I'm gonna grab this guy and I can see that it's currently uh, vertical. I need this to be horizontal. So I'm gonna press uh, E, hold on the J key and just lay this down so it aligns with my leaf. Then go into the attribute editor and under bend, let's start to bend this and we can see how that's bending. So I'm gonna do something like this, about 80 degrees curvature. And now we can grab this, press W and we can move this. Very nice. And now what I would like to do is I need to leave this as is, but I want to bend even more here. So I'm going to actually, um, I'm going to select both of these, clear the history. All right, to get this uh, bottom part, I'm actually going to jump into uh, this view here, uh, the front view. And what I would like to do is I would like to bend just this portion here a lot more. And I can do this by just manually moving these into position. 
So let's go into our front view and just kind of manually curl them in. So I'm gonna grab my uh, faces, just grab these faces here and just start twisting them. So you can press E and W and move them around, press E and you can keep um, twisting them. You can also, of course, keep adjusting the soft select as you move stuff around so it doesn't maybe it doesn't affect as much. Like this guy here is really curling in a lot, right? So I kind of like that. So I'm just going to do the same. Just really curl it in. And if you needed to, you can even go to verts. Uh, press B to turn off your um, soft select and you can maintain the thickness so make sure that you don't lose some of that nice leaf uh, thickness that we have going and if you needed uh, more topology like right um, at any point you can always uh, grab the uh, cut tool and just make a cut and maybe let's say you can do a cut to add more geometry just like I did and then you can move these points by pressing W. So you have a nice bend going. That's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is if you go to the edge, you can double click on your edge. Just make sure you double click on it so it selects the entire loop. And then you can do a uh, bevel. And that's another way of doing it because then you can put in kind of a custom um, distance right it's kind of easy to control you can press G on your keyboard to repeat the last command if you like how the previous one was set up uh, that will give you a re re uh, like a repeat and then let's go into this view and take a look I think that's uh, really nice I'm going to rotate this And let's just do a couple custom adjustments. This part of the leaf feels like it's, it needs to be, I'm gonna press B. It feels like it needs to be a little more like this. Maybe. At this point, it's more of a, um, just a preference, like artistic preference. So just make sure it looks good and it feels good and has like a nice flow that you like. So I kind of like something like this, I think. I think that's interesting. And I'm gonna turn off my um, grid. And if you wanted to, if you wanted to add this cut that you see on the side of the leaf, you could do that by, you can grab the cut tool and I don't want my edge flow on with my knife tools. And I'm going to press B to turn off the soft select. I'm going to grab the knife tool and just do uh, like a custom cut of how I want my edges to be. Just like that. Once you're happy with it, press enter. And now let's just take this whole chunk off. I'm gonna go into a face mode, select this whole chunk that I just drew in and press delete. I can also grab my verts, press W. I can adjust the size of it. Very nice. Let's go ahead and click on this and this edge and do a bridge and do the same thing on this side. I'm just gonna press G to repeat the command. Now, obviously this is no longer a quad, right? So to fix this, uh, we could just grab our cut tool and just manually tell Maya that we want this to be a quad. So maybe we'll put a line here. And now one, two, three, four, you can see this turn into a quad. And so is this, one, two, three, four. So it's nice and clean. And we could do the same thing uh, on this side. So again, maintaining a very low, clean game topology, right? So 
So that's how you do a cut if you uh, wanted to put one in. All right, I'm gonna press uh, D, hold on the V key and snap this to the edge. I'm going to rotate this down and let's go ahead and put this into position. I'm gonna press R to scale it so it fits kind of the proportion of my flower a little better. All right, here, I'm just gonna grab this guy here, press um, B, and I would like this to be a little more gentle, the way it's connecting. So something like that, I think is, just looks more pleasant. It's more uh, organic looking. So something like that uh, should work. I'm, I can actually rotate this even more. And again, now it just comes down to preference, but Let's say uh, I'm happy with this guy, which I'm not. I actually like it better like this. And I still feel like he's a little too big. So, I think uh, this is nice. I'm gonna press uh, Control D and grab my rotation tool, hold on the J key and just flip this around. Uh, I actually don't need to hold on the J key because I, I actually don't want it to be symmetrical. I would like it to be not symmetrical so it feels again more organic, maybe change the position as well. So something like this is nice. All right, so I think uh, this is a good place to stop. Let's not make this video too long, but in our uh, next video, maybe we can uh, do some UVs and texture for this and make it um, beautiful and magical. But at this point, I think I'm gonna stop. The only other thing I could do is just grab this here and maybe uh, we can make it more straight so it actually goes into the pot when if we uh, if we have a pot or the ground right another thing we could do is maybe make this part a little thicker so it just seems like it goes with the style of this flower so it's a little more interesting with the curve and then there's a little kind of taper happening now I do like these little things but that's really uh, easy to add. Uh, maybe we can add those really quick as well. That's just, um, I would go as simple as, let's grab a, not a sphere, let's grab a box and do a another, another uh, smooth on it. Let's go ahead and make it subdivide by one. And now what I would like to do is just, let's just grab these guys here, press B to turn off your soft select if it's on, and I'm gonna do uh, control E. I'm gonna grab my move tool and just pull this out. Press R to scale this in. And now I'm gonna go into my edge mode, double click on this edge here. If you wanted to make it straight, you could scale this in just like this. It's almost looking like a microphone. Um, we could press uh, R to scale this down and then press uh, bevel to give us more, kind of a smoother transition there. And I think this is perfect for kind of these kind of things. And then you just can just stretch this out, make it even more uh, kind of organic looking. And then they do have a little bend in them. So to create the bend, uh, again, same thing. We can just select our shape, go to uh, edge loops, do a multiple and just give ourselves some edges. And then let's just go ahead and just select. Let's select uh, these points here, press B. And just kind of move this up. 
one way of doing it. I'm actually not liking how it's deforming, so let's do a bend, press E, hold on the J key, flip this 90 degrees, and just do a bend. I think that's better because then it's bending kind of uh, uniformly across the whole thing. I'm going to clear my history to get uh, rid of the uh, the bend modifier. And now let's just go ahead and quickly put this into place. Now uh, I'm going to do D, hold on the V, just snap it. Let's bring this up. And in my case, uh, I think mine are going to be just coming from the center. I know that's not the case in the reference, but I'm clearly making a little bit of a different of a flower. So in my case, this flower has these things coming from the center. Uh, let's see if I can move it up. Very nice. Control D. Let's give ourselves a few of these. So I'm thinking of probably four or five. Let's do control D. Do control D one more time. And we can rotate that if we needed to. Yeah, so something like that is cool. Now uh, we could scale them so they're not all exactly the same. So you, you see what I keep doing? I keep trying to change it to make it feel more and more uh, organic. Maybe this could be actually a little larger. All right, so I think I'm gonna stop here. This is uh, what I ended up with for my magical uh, flower. And uh, so far this thing is 1200, uh, 1264 faces and only 2500 tries. So this is super low poly game asset. If you wanted to uh, see it high res, you can just select the whole thing and press three on your keyboard. And you can see what that would look like if it was high resolution. Maybe you're making a short film or an animation. You don't need it to be a game asset. This is the output. Uh, I think it looks amazing. As long as your topology is really clean uh, and beautiful, uh, going to high res is gonna be very easy. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial and in our next video, uh, let's go ahead and create uh, UVs for this uh, beautiful flower and uh, bring it into Substance Painter to add the glow and the gradients uh, and that should be fun. Alright, so I'll see you uh, in the next video. Thanks for watching.